I'll be going up, but the only friend I'll recognize at my high school reunion will be Money. I'll walk up to Money and say, Money, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Wow, you haven't changed a bit. Well, actually, I remember when you were a big bill, and now you've been confined to quarters. Oh, Money. Yeah. I guess the more things change, the more Money remains the same. I, I thought I'd leave you with that. Oh, and finally, okay. Finally, for this interior monologue, which you're um, forced to witness, uh, the chimp Hamlet. I was thinking if I were incredibly wealthy and had a lot of money, I could hire a chimpanzee to type Hamlet for me. But predictably enough, Hamlet would be rewritten according to chimp dicta, you know, along chimp terminologies, you know. So uh, at the graveyard scene, he'd hold up a banana peel and say, Alas, poor Chiquita, I knew thee well. A banana of infinite jest. You know, uh, of course, his famous soliloquy, to be or not to be, or to swing in a tree. That is the question. Uh, get thee to a petting zoo, Ophelia. You know, all the famous lines, and you can just like do it all with chimps. And of course, when Hamlet gets iced at the end, here lies a noble ape. Good night, sweet chimp, and flights of angels swing thee to thy nest. Uh, anyway, that was the chimp now. Someday it's going to go into production. I just got to like raise 12 million dollars and uh, get some prominent chimp stars like, uh, oh, I don't know, Roddy McDowell, uh, J. Fred Munt. Are there any famous chimps anymore? Where have all the famous chimps gone, damn it? The world's not, they, they, they won't go on a boycott, you know. They're like, we refuse to be famous. So every time you put us on a unicycle, we're just going to fall off, you know. We won't perform cutting capers for your amusement. And uh, in fact, I think the time has come for me to say that I will no longer perform cutting capers for your amusement or bewilderment or amazement. I think it's time to bring on our resident poet, whose name, unfortunately, I did not register on um, my skull when I looked at the piece of paper that he signed in order to come up. Where is he? Uh, that's for me. Yeah. Well, Oh, all right, come to the front of the class. Now, I'm going to have you clap your racers if you don't behave. You know, here he is. Um, please introduce yourself. My name is Michael Vecchio. I'm from Austin, Texas. That's where I'm from. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. This first one's called You Bullfighter. You Bullfighter have built this grand confrontation, this manly expression of your snout and prowess over extremely fucked up bulls into a statement of your marital intent. All families are present. You enter the ring, dazzling, target of arcing roses, master of bodily barking, petty stance. Enter the extremely fucked up bull. You dally. You dander. You perform all appropriate ritual. You kill the bull. It is bloody. It is great. The families are pleased. She is pleased. And you notice this. And begin pumping the blade brutally into the dead, extremely fucked up bull's body. In this manner, you fall from grace. This is a poem called The Wild Bunch. Even Sam Peck and Paul could not creep along at this pace. With Sam, who always had the shutter just set, we never missed the flesh coming off. So when people ooed and people eyed, we knew them pain was involved, had Sam stepped forward one pace, 
and spared the shudder one tick. We might have missed the frame when the flesh comes off and know nothing of pain. This is called Here I Desire. Releasing all that crossing has brought you, consider from which character stands, consider even beneath, in the white space of bright light where there is hope, where there are the corpse's first words, here I desire. His words are like stick figures at a distance and at a greater distance like a picket fence that promises enclosure, control, and still further, only a white line on a black horizon, the horizon that has eaten the sun from inside out. And that squinting as a face of leaf and stone brings its last blade to rest as an afterlife that is past time, chaos among friends. Their play is a passing of the corpse from hand to hand, drawing deeply from its emptiness as nothing mindful, as nothing lovely, laced and mindful, is passed on, is drawn through lips that curl, is gaining character in these moments, is squatting quietly peeling its shell, preserving its skins as nothing beyond itself, as nothing that turns outward and mindless and releases its face of leaf and stone. This is called kicking the habit. <coughs> the way I understand it, Tossing a coin collapses over backward and tumbles into your hand without warning, but wholly welcome the slamming door and lifted curtain propel you face forward over land with promises of praise, good fortune, the little things disappear on faith, a debtor, a call low inside you suggests placing itself first. Aside the patient flow of steel, a community of thieves build fires, and we, their friends, dance. With pain, you first took me there, saying, please wait, don't think, see if anything moves inside when we all join hands. If nothing moves, you are free to go. Otherwise, I'll be home at three. You can find me there. I got a couple of progress poems to do. Uh, for those of you who don't know of Lubbock, Texas, it's a little town uh, out in the desert. This is called The Progression of Lubbock. His point of ignition is lost as he awakens his vision of black rubber gaining traction from pavement. The slippage of rear wheels seduces heat right off the road, wobbles, drops us into low gear, lifts ship from dust, blows engines, wails, bloody fucking man's eyebrows. Rise slowly. This is the last poem I'm going to do. It's called Instrument of Silence. You want a darkness to gather at your feet. So when you feel like it, you can kick sideways and bust loose a piece like a dry crust of mud. If you're lucky, a wind will come along and take it away to some place of dignity so you can eat. When it returns on a different wind and takes its place in your dry bed, you can walk out on that bed and make music from crackling darkness. Thank you.
example that Joe is doing a practice we hope to see more poetry. Uh, now we have Mr. Stephen Wilson, who is a young man with a good poem. And all one needs to um, I'd like to mention something. I was reading in Dennis the Menace in the Herald the other day. See, I'm not allowed to tell jokes, so I, I think I'll read from the comics instead. Uh, there's this thing, he's holding this skull, and he's, um, he goes up to his mom and says, Ma, look what fell out of Mr. Wilson's head. <laughs> no, no, that's not really what this says. This one's even, this one's even more terrifying than that. Uh, Dennis and Joey are dressed up in cowboy apparel. And Dennis is handing one of his spurs to Joey, and as the sensitive Dennis notes, Here, I don't need two spurs. If I get one side of my horse to run, the other side will have to go with it. Sort of like uh, capitalism. Anyway, who would have thought? You know, I'm Here's Stephen Wilson.
song that's in the, I guess it's called Every Light Cast a Shadow. It's very hard for me to stand up, but I like sitting down a little bit. No, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of very weird because I like to feel very good. If there's any part of the song that y'all don't like, uh, please let me know because it is an on, uh, it's, it's in work or in progress. I'm 
I've had lonely times before. Seems like yesterday I held you in my dreams. Fit perfectly together, whatever together means. So for now, you take this arrow and I'll take the blue. soon. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kristen, and I'm your door person for the evening. And I'm also going to try to read this poem to the best of my ability. I'm usually better at writing them than I am reading them, but, um, which is why I write them out instead of just, well, anyway. Um, on a whim and a brief flight from discomfort, I sacrifice all that I know all that I think I've worked for or against in order that I could rearrange the order of all that I control. I quit everything for hope. I hope to return to nothing like a clean, cold slate, no mistakes, scars, bloody blemishes, to start again in my own womb, to give birth to my own self, to learn again and make the same errors in a new and different order. As if nothing happened, as if nothing mattered, I close my eyes to let nothingless 
nothingness fall on my lap, I will embrace it with strong arms until it dissipates into nothing, something I can dispose of. And Dorothy Dwyer. You never know. I, you know, I've had the same job for two years, so I still read the want ads. But I don't read the personal <coughs> section anymore because I just got so disgusted one day. I sat down and I said, I'm going to write to everybody, every pompous jerk in this personal ad, in this personal section. And around the 200th postcard, I realized, you know, I'm, I'm writing these postcards like, Dear Box 9023, get a life. I'm praying for you. Signed, Mother Teresa. And around the 200th postcard, I realized. This is a pretty clear indication that I don't have a life. So anyways, I, I stopped doing what I was doing, and I, I never placed an ad, except my mother wanted me to place an ad because the last date I, went, I had was with like Tim, the pest control guy. <laughs> and so she said, Dottie, why don't you just write up an ad? Just, just write up something, anything. So I wrote up this ad, SWF 28 Hazel Eyes, brown hair, seeks boyfriend. I work three jobs, I don't have any time. If you call me, I probably wouldn't be home. Never mind, forget it, sorry. So I got about 23 replies, and uh, I'm dating this priest right now. We have a lot in common, we're both celibate. Um, has anyone ever seen a bad looking vampire? I mean, these guys are the coolest of the cool, the baddest of the bad, their, their hair is great, their makeup is perfect. How do they do it? They can't see their own reflection in the mirror. No. <laughs> and that's probably why they've got that guy Igor around, sort of combination security guard and fashion consultant. He's the guy who guards the coffin all day, makes sure there's fresh dirt from the original grave, and he still has time to get the dry cleaning done. <laughs> We're having a wonderful time here, aren't we, kids? I'm just having it. You know how you can tell it's, it's hard for graduation time or MIT graduation time? Guy comes up to me on the tee the other day and comes right up to me and starts doing this whole fashion show. Chinese Liberation brought to you by Paul. And then he just walked away. Okay, I'm a work in progress here, so I'm just working on this. Okay? Oh, you know what happened to me? I got the word jumble wrong. I wrote down Elvis, and it should have been Libs, which could explain a lot of things. The inquirer is making all this money on this innocent dyslexia. And, uh, I, one last thing and then I'm out of here. I'd like to sing my cat song for you. This is a song I wrote for my cat. <coughs> you feel that somewhere else? Morris is my kitty cat. He hangs around the house all day. He doesn't have a real job because he cannot sign his name. He likes mice and baby birds and his friskies too. He can't talk like you and me because his esophagus is too small. Thank you very much. Bring me back to your house, Francis or Christian. Sorry about that. No problem. A date is not a date that will be with me. Um, or Femi, as the case may be. Miss Dorothy Dwyer, please another hand for the hard working Dorothy Dwyer. 
her bring Frida up, she's going to attempt to do something a little unusual. Uh, well, she's going to sing. She's not sing by a cassette tape. Uh, we have a cute up there, Michael. Uh, the cassette, all you do is you press the pause button. And if you don't do it right, I'll be depressed. Now, Mike's really handy around the house. There's... <laughs> hey, you're trying to take my dick out of my mouth. Oh, sorry. Uh, here she
No, Stephen, so much.
from an airplane. I, uh, I'm from Chicago, and about a year ago, uh, they showed this on the news. A guy was jumping out of an airplane. He's jumping out of an airplane. And he's got a video camera. He's going to videotape his descent. Now, he and his buddies had decided to drink some booze before they went up in the plane. Well, they're, they're toasted. He jumps out of the plane. You see the camera. This is on the news, the 10 o'clock news. Well, we have 10 o'clock news. You have 11 o'clock news here. He goes up to show the plane. He shows the ground, and then the camera starts shaking. Well, the, the newscaster had, has told us that this is a tape of a guy who was videotaping his descent who forgot to wear a parachute. Now, the, the videotape survived. The guy didn't. And I so sensitively wrote a song about it. <laughs> Susie. 
some feedback, like some crackly feedback here. Uh, is that from this or from this? This? Should I just take it out? Well, so super. All right. This is called Hannibal the Cannibal. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I kind of dwell on some kind of like the socially not necessarily acceptable things. And this is probably, well, this is a funny story that goes along with this. There's uh, friends of my parents who are going up to Alaska. They're going up to Alaska. They, they're camping out at the end where, they, where the road ends up in Alaska. Well, they're coming back after their time. They've only got a little bit of water back, water, water left. And they're coming back and a, a moose wanders out in front of the road. This is a true story. The moose wanders out. It is, it's true. Hey, what, you know, it is. Hey, I mean, you know, it is, it's true. These are part of his parents. And so the moose, hit the car hits the moose, so the moose hits the car, depending on which perspective you're looking at it, and the moose flies through the window, and the moose dies, and the moose poop goes all inside the, the car. Well, it's all over them, it's all over the, my mom's friend, the, the woman, the man, it's all over, it's everywhere. Well, the glass cutter, okay? And she's like, and she's screaming, she's screaming, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, he takes, and he sees, he sees the moose shit in her cut, and so he takes the water, and he throws it on the moose shit on her cut, and she says, no, you dumb son of a bitch, it's in my mouth. <laughs> so this is a song about things you shouldn't put in your mouth. Oh, 
because no matter how I feel, you will never feel the same. Because you're like your man, so big and strong. Until I'm old, too, it will be very, very, very long. Because you see, I'm only 10, and you're probably up with somewhere around 28. I'm not sure. I promise, 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 promise. That's what I'm telling you. I got my first crush, and I'd have to say, Miss Brown, my teacher, you're the one. I got my first crush, and I'd have to say that I'm the unlucky one. Ah, uh, Miss Brown, Miss Brown, your face is all I can see, but ah, uh, my bedtime is 9.15. I got my first crush, and I'd have to say how oh, I wish it had never, ever begun. Kid on an amorous educational skit. I'm the only kid in your class that has any kind of talent, Miss Brown. I'll check into Scooby Doo. Happy, 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 Miss Brown, Miss Brown, Miss Brown, Miss Brown. I got something to tell you. I got my first crush, and I'd have to say, Miss Brown, my teacher, you're the one. I got my first crush, and I'd have to say that I'm the unlucky one. I tattooed your name across my chest with the last bit of paste from my. Fresh, oh, Miss Brown, Miss Brown, I, I have to say that I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish it had never begun. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, good night, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. special because he's going to agree to perform virtually on a moment's notice. What? You do not applaud? Well, get him up there and get his guitar open. Gabriel, Gabriel, um, Gabriel. <laughs> no, no, don't take all day. <laughs>
animals, and I started treating animals like they were plants. So I'd get my dog and I'd pour a little can of water on his head. And then I'd get my spider plant and I'd tie it to a sled and whip it with a giant lash. Uh, I guess you don't go to zoos. I'm sorry, I guess I never should have come up here. I taught my grandmother something that they always tell you never to teach her. I taught my grandmother to suck eggs. And then I taught her to suck toast. And now she can get her own breakfast. Just a touching story from my childhood past. I'm sorry, folks. I guess I never should have come up here. You've been a lousy audience. I hate you all. And that's how you don't do comedy. But here's some guys who are naturals in what they do. Um, I like to introduce some Pete. And um, I don't know his side man's name, Wayne. <laughs> Pete and Wayne. Pete, you're in the Velcro Peasants, aren't you? Yes. Pete, are you going to favor us with that, uh, that prize winning song of yours? Yes. Oh, good. I'm, I'm mighty glad. Well, then, let's bring him on. Our featured actor. <laughs> Do not mock me, earth people. Check, 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 check. Excuse us whilst we do a very unprofessional thing. Give me the... Thank you.
Burn a cup, it's open the 
warps everything anyway.
Are we finished? Are we through? Will we never work in this town again? <coughs> I guess we never should have come here. Wait, 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 Remarkable, amazing, fantastic, and cute. Uh, uh, forgive me, Jati. And another hand for the Velcro head and shoulders. Uh, the Porsche company we saw represent on stage today. I keep on saying both of them. Pretty soon, uh, Shinsuke Yamaguchi will show a movie by Jati. <laughs> Hello. Well, I'm just gonna try a song. I never really tried a song without instruments before. I'll give it a shot anyway. Anyhow. There's a land that I heard about so far across the sea. There's a land that I heard about so far across the sea. To have you there on my dreamland. Would be like heaven to me to have you there on my dreamland. Would be like heaven to me. We'll get our breakfast from the tree, we'll get our honey from the bees, we'll take a ride on the waterfall and all the glories, glories we'll share them all and we'll live together on my dreamland and have so much fun we'll live together on my dreamland and have so much fun oh what the time that will be or oh, just you wait 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 and see we'll count the stars up above in the sky and surely we'll never die and surely we'll never die thank you I'm just, one of the reasons i came up here well, it's because I'm trying to get over stage fright, and uh, All right. I still got some more to go, but thank you for your attention. Uh, I really don't have time for one more because we have other people coming up. That's so I'm next. Still That's next week. All right, peace. <laughs> peace, Jati, Nehru, Indira Gandhi, all these go together, but Jati. Shinsuke Yamaguchi, I'm going to um, draw the curtain so you may show this film that you've prepared for us. I hope it's a cartoon. I love cartoons.